Good evening, everyone. The time is seven o'clock, and I now declare this ordinary meeting of Council on March 27, 2024, open. In opening the meeting, I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, the Wadarong people of the Kulin Nation. We acknowledge and respect their continuing connection to lands, waters, skies, culture, and the contribution they make to the life and spirit of our community. We pay respect to elders past and present, and extend that respect to all First Nations people. Our second item is present and apologies. We've got our five councillors in attendance, but from an officer perspective, are there any apologies to note? Your microphone on. Uh, Gihan and Abby are apologies, and also Jenny Walker is an apology. Thank you. That brings us to item three, pecuniary interest and conflict of interest disclosures. Councillors or officers, can I call for any disclosures at this point? Nope, we note there are none. Leave of absence of councillor, there are also none. Uh, public question time, item five, and then item 5.1 is the public question status update. And at this point, uh, while no public questions are outstanding, I wish to move an alternate motion that um, council officers update the status of public question two from Kelvin Pettigrove at his request with the following status. Mr. Pettigrove has submitted a formal complaint regarding the Learmont Street electric vehicle charging stations to the Ombudsman. Um, I move that as the amendment or as, as a motion. So if I can have a seconder for that acknowledgement or change. Thank you, Councillor Minty. All in favour? Thank you, carried unanimously. 5.2, public questions. So in accordance with Council's public question time guidelines, we have, I can confirm we've received eight questions that have been received in the prescribed timelines. The first of those comes from James Rush, who I can't see in the audience, so I will read out his question uh, for him. On the backdrop of cost of living pressures experienced by residents and pressures on the 2024-25 budget, my question to the CEO and councillors is why do we need three rather than one bylaw, bylaws officer and at what additional costs are being incurred by ratepayers? Being an accountant, I understand the true cost of having these additional bylaws officers. There is labour costs plus vehicle running costs, including depreciation and financing costs annually. And I will ask the CEO to respond. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, and, and through you. Um, so Council currently has one full-time senior law enforcement officer and one full-time law enforcement officer. This arrangement has been in place since about 19, uh, t at least 2009. Council also has a school crossing supervisor who can cover leave or illness as a casual law enforcement officer when required. Um, look, it's our view that two law enforcement officers are the number of law enforcement officers needed to meet the service level expectations of our community and the broader roles and functions required to implement the Borough of Queenscliff General Local Law adopted in 2021. We don't see any additional costs with the current arrangement uh, that compared to earlier uh, arrangements. Thank you. That brings us to our next public question, which comes from Dean Hurlston at Council Watch Inc. And that question is, what amount of waste enforcement costs in the current financial year 2023-24 has the Council included in its waste levies charged to residents, if any? And again, I will ask the CEO to respond. Thank you, Mayor, and through you. Um, Council has not included waste enforcement costs in the 2023-24 financial year budget. Our third question tonight comes from David Connolly. David, would you like to read it out? Or you? Yep. A colourful 38-page Reflect Reconciliation Action Plan is presented tonight, unknown cost, containing 13 actions and near 50 deliverables beginning from February to November this year. 
These are presented without a budget costing for any action or a business case and cost benefit analysis where applicable. There is not one action or deliverable, deliverable in the RAP supporting healthy country and supporting our local environment that respects many local community voices and values. While reconciliation is a desirable platform, can Council detail tonight how the RAP actions and deliverables are possible given noted budget and resource constraints and given such lack of information and the commitment to healthy country, how can this council endorse a document that commits unknown resources and equal, equally endorse a document that neglects the health and custodianship of our environment that is recognised as a priority for all? Until such issues are resolved, can council revise, update and present, uh, represent, represent, pardon me, this plan? I'm happy to respond to this and noting that it is an, an item for consideration, I can't preempt if changes are to be made to the draft before us. But what might be helpful is to start with how a re reflect reconciliation action plan is and, and the process and guidelines that inform its creation via Reconciliation Australia, who are the responsible body for endorsing and accrediting the plans across the country for both local government organisations or civil society organisations or private organisations. So a Reflect Reconciliation Action Plan is the first of four formal plans that help organisations understand what it means to engage in a reconciliation process and then put in place ways of working that promote and advance reconciliation. A Reflect RAP, um, as I'll acronymise it, is an internal document and about preparing an organisation to engage meaningfully in reconciliation. Reconciliation Australia states that committing to a Reflect RAP starts with engaging staff and leaders and understanding the importance of reconciliation. It includes developing relationships with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander stakeholders and scoping where your organisation can have the best impact in your sphere of influence. As per this requirement, um, the first or statement, the first level of consultation to develop the RAP is, has occurred with traditional owners who membered the RAP working group with councillors and council officers. The next of the four plans, should we get there, an innovate reconciliation action plan requires council to engage in its sphere of influence, which does of course include our community. Um, and that's when we'd be looking to do undertake consultation and get people, if they're interested, to join that process or partner in progressing reconciliation. Palat Jarajar, the Healthy Country Plan is referenced throughout the document before Council tonight, prim primarily in the context of ensuring aligned targets and that this document is embedded indeed into Council's own documents and approach to work, particularly in the environment, given it's about healthy country. And if Council does adopt the wrap before us, uh, the development of the Innovate Plan will take place over the next two years. A follow up? There are 50 deliverables in the project and this particular plan hasn't gone out for community consultation, so I'm a bit um, staggered that we might adopt a plan that uh, has 50 deliverables but hasn't gone to the community without a budget. That's, I'll, I'll take that on notice given that we're yet to adopt it um, and those implications uh, can be addressed if, if and when as part of the debate and if it's adopted. So the plan can be adopted without, in terms of governance, without public consultation? Uh, yes, and Geelong and Surf Coast, for example, our, our neighbouring councils who've quite recently adopted Reflect um, Reconciliation Action Plans have also followed the guidelines and, and not consulted, but other councils who are further through the process do do exactly that, which is our intention. The next question comes from Michelle Jepson. Would you like to read your question out, Michelle? You're happy for me to? The ratepayers of the borough have a reasonable expectation that they will be taken on the reconciliation journey and other projects from the outset. The very nature of your role as elected representatives indicates you hold office to represent the community's views. It is noted the RAP is focused on four core pillars, the two of which involve relationships and respect. To be presented with this document just 42, 48 hours ahead of your consideration of the matter, 
in a formal meeting of the council is far from respectful of your relationships with your community. Your note that council does not have the option of does not have the option of editing or amending the Re Reflect Reconciliation Action Plan following the endorsement of Reconciliation Australia highlights yet again the ramifications of your continuing failures to engage with the community as required under the Local Government Act 2020. Will the councillors defer endorsing this wrap as presented tonight to a later meeting to enable the broader community consultation and better understand what you can realistically achieve? Uh, as per the response to David, I can't determine whether a deferral will happen. That's certainly up to councillors when we get to this item in tonight's agenda, so I can't preempt that outcome. But I do refer to my response to the previous question around the process of creating and endorsing a reflect wrap. Reiterate that councils follow the guidelines from Reconciliation Australia and that community will be engaged as we move through future phases of this document if we endorse or adopt a document here tonight or in coming months. Public question number five comes from the QCA. A new con oh sorry, David, would you like a new concrete shared path has been laid to the boat ramp costing $120,000 plus design and staff time that is generally non-compliant with Australian standards and the DOT grant funding MOU. It is located contrary to where the ratio active transport strategy located it on their map in both the draft and final report released in December. The new path location was done without resident and community consultation or advice or notice of access alterations while works took place. Without a detailed plan, there are unknown parking implications and impacts for residents. The works are now subject to a formal complaint given detriment to the residents and acknowledged failures to consult and give notice. Can Mayor Tolhurst and fellow councillors detail tonight what remedial action and organisational improvements they propose given such evident failures? Uh, so of the issues, we'll, we'll, the CEO and, and I will answer this question in, in two parts, but of the issues listed, uh, the key oversight here was a failure to notify local residents that the works were commencing. So access to the rear of Wharf Street properties was not disrupted during the works, but we certainly should have let people know that those works had begun and that there would be no impact to their access. An apology has been sent directly to a resident who raised uh, explicitly the concerns about a failure to notify. And I'll hand over to the CEO to finish that response. Yeah, thank you, Mayor, and through you. Um, yes, it's, uh, a courtesy letter is an important part and, um, and I think uh, potentially the fact that we received the petition uh, earlier or a week or so before um, commencing the works, asking us to commence the works and, and get them done urgently, maybe influenced or maybe um, meant that we, we didn't go through the process as thoroughly as possible. But we, we do normally send courtesy letters to people that we're, we're starting to work, starting to do work adjacent to. And so um, Stuart and I will reinforce the importance of this type of notice um, to the staff who manage these projects. But we, we do note that the, there are works under the Road Management Act. Um, there's no formal requirement for consultation. As I say, it's a, it's a courtesy to let people know when um, works have been undertaken. Importantly, uh, councillors need to realise this is an oversight of, in terms of your motion. You had a motion that before any work started with the ATS, an implementation plan, which hasn't been presented, it will be presented tonight. So in just in terms of governance, how does the council meet its governance requirements? And um, in, despite petitions or what have you um, about uh, all abilities path, this is under 2.5 or 2.4 metres. And just in terms of governance, how does council respond that if its own motion is not adhered to by the administration? Through you, Mayor, I, I, I think there's a, a difference of opinion around the interpretation of that motion. This is a project that's been on the books 
since uh, a budget allocation was made in uh, 2022. So yes, it's, it's referred to in the ATS, but the motion doesn't specifically um, stop work that was already in progress. I'm going to move on to public question number six. Uh, the name and address of the person asking this question um, was disclosed. However, they've requested that personal details be kept private in the interests of, of privacy. And the question is thus, given councillors pride themselves on community consultation, can councillors outline the extent of the community consultation undertaken before they committed $300,000 of ratepayers' funds to the Ballara estate? So this questioner is, is correct. There was no community consultation due to the timing of the request and, and the lining up of the VCAT hearing that um, re relied on that information or determination being made. However, the decision to provide contingent financial support does align with the community vision, in particular, the aspiration of protecting and celebrating both Wadarung and Burra heritage. And that goal in the community vision is that our cultural and built heritage is conserved and celebrated. So contingencies were set in the motion adopted by council at the March ordinary meeting and are required to be fulfilled before the contribution is officially made. And council does remain in discussion with the family members who advocated for this outcome. Public question number seven comes from the Point Lonsdale Civic Association. Thank you, David. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The association understands that major rem remediation works are continuing on the Murray Road development site formerly owned by Queenscliff Council and the current EPA earthworks are part of planning permit conditions for the redevelopment subdivision of the site. Given the ex excavations and earth cleansing works are well into the original landfill are there any cost implications for council or ratepayers? Thank you, David. I'll get the CEO to respond to this one. The short answer is no. Okay. The association understands Queenscliff Council offices and Department of Transport are in discussions about improvements to the Fallows Road Ballerine Highway intersection can Council provide any information about what's planned to improve this intersection and who will pay for it? Um, the context of this is a recent nasty accident at that corner and also the fact that the land to the north of the highway, including the commercial area, is for sale. So if there are any discussions um, taking place, uh, can you inform us? I'll defer that to the CEO. Thank you, David. Um, David, the, so uh, we've been advocating with uh, the Department of Transport for a number of years about that intersection on behalf of Council and we continue to, to advocate. So we meet with uh, strategic planners at the Department of Transport. Um, I think it's, it's usually every six months, Stuart, I think. Um, and so we've put that to them that that's an important intersection and that there's some concerns that we have as a, as a council. So we haven't had any discussions about when they're going to respond to our advocacy or what they might do there, but we just keep putting it in front of them to say that we think that it's something that they should consider in their long-term planning. Okay. And I presume the, the cost of any works there would be borne by... Department of Transport? Yeah, I imagine ma the majority of the works would be within the, um, the declared uh, state highway. Um, and my understanding is previous works that have been done on the, the Ballerine have been, where we haven't initiated them, have been paid for by the, the state government. Okay, thank you. Thank you, David. The next question comes from David Mitchell. Thank you. Was either the Reconciliation Action Plan or the Mayoral Refugee Advocacy Policy released for public consultation before being included in tonight's agenda? Uh, the short answer is no. Um, as we've discussed earlier, 
in the meeting in response to similar questions about the RAP. Um, so in the first instance, I'll give some more detail about the RAP and, and that's um, that the REFLECT informs the first, the five dimensions of reconciliation, so race relations, equality and equity, institutional integrity, unity and historical acceptance. And as we've mentioned, each of the subsequent plans uh, expands on its potential reach and the set of activities that might be implemented by a council or group to support reconciliation. So being the first stage, the consultation has not occurred with community. It has occurred with the traditional owners as the, as the primary stakeholders to that document um, and subsequent versions of the document would engage the community. With respect to the question about the mayoral refugee advocacy policy, council tonight is not proposing a policy rather to endorse a motion put by another council at the Australian Local Government Association conference in May, I believe. So that task force, uh, the, the local government mayoral task force for people seeking asylum is a group of councils that came together in 2018 to coordinate. Councils remained a supporter member for several years at no cost. Um, and we're often, as a result of that membership, invited to support motions or actions consistent with, pre and in, in the knowledge that council has undertaken previous advocacy uh, to support our, our refugee and asylum seeker community, including being a refugee welcome zone and putting motions or working with other councils to put motions to past ALGA conferences. <clears throat> Follow up. In, in light of the first part of your um, answer, which was no public consultation was undertaken, I personally would like to make submissions on the wrap, on the um, um, advocacy policy for refugees and another item included in tonight's agenda, the implementation plan for the ATS. Now, if there has been no public consultation, you can't endorse or adopt any of those motions tonight. Thank you. Thank you, David. That brings us to the conclusion of public question time and I'll move us to item six, confirmation of minutes of previous meetings. 6.1, ordinary council meeting on 28 Feb 2024. So the copy of the minutes have been distributed under separate cover and the recommendation is that this record be adopted as an accurate one and confirmed here tonight. Do I have someone to move that please? Councillor Ebbles is our mover and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Minty. All in favour of adopting those minutes? Thank you, carried unanimously. So item 6.2, ordinary meeting of, of, sorry, of council on the same date, the Feb 28 for the confidential minutes now. So the same recommendation is in place that tonight we record or confirm that as an accurate record. Do I have someone to move that please? Sorry, Councillor Minty is our mover and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Ebbles. All in favour of adopting those minutes? Thank you, carried unanimously. Item 6.3 still keeps us in um, minute confirmation. So the special meeting of Council on March 20. Uh, the recommendation again here is that the minutes be recorded as an accurate record. Can I have someone to move that, please? Councillor Ebbles, I'll use as our mover, and Councillor Minty as the seconder. 6.4. Oh, pardon me. Sorry. Thank you. Pardon me. Sorry. Can I have a vote? Can I please have a by show of hands um, those who wish to confirm that record? as accurate. Thank you, carried unanimously again. And then I'll go to item 6.4, which is the special meeting of council on 20th of March in the confidential minutes. So may I have a mover for this, please? Thank you, Councillor Minty. And a seconder, Councillor Ebbles. And I'll put this one to the vote. All in favour? Thank you, also carried unanimously. 
We have a record of informal meetings of councillors and the recommendation is here, here is to uh, acknowledge or note the informal record as presented in adjunct to item seven. Do I have someone to move that? Councillor Ebbles, thank you, our mover and a seconder, Councillor Minty, should have guessed. Um, all in favour of adopt adopting that record or noting that record, thank you. That's also carried unanimously. Item eight is a notice of motion and 8.1 is notice of motion status update. At the ordinary meeting of council on Feb 28, three notices of motion were received and the update is provided at adjunct to item 8.1. Um, there are no notices of motion outstanding. Item 8.2, motion on notice. No notices of motion were received. Item nine is petitions and joint letters and none were received here either. Functions attended, so council has a list, there is a list in the agenda identifying uh, where council was represented at various functions and meetings between Feb 22 and March 20, 2024. Uh, and I wish to straight up put uh, an alternate um, or amended, uh, an amended motion that uh, adopts the record or, or, or receives the report with the following changes. Uh, one, that uh, Mayor Tolhurst did not attend governing in the climate emergency session two on March one. Uh, that item two, that local trader conversations occurred on March 19, not March 20, and uh, that Councillor Tolhurst did not attend the Masonic Lodge film screening on March 20. Do I have someone to second that noting of a report? Oh, thank you, Councillor Minty is our seconder. All in favour of adopting the report or receiving the report with the following changes. Thank you, that's also carried unanimously. Item 11 is Chief Executive Officer, 11.1 CEO report for March 2024. Uh, I will hand over to the CEO to talk us through the report and then take any questions. Thank you, Mayor. I'll, I'll take the report as read and, and happy to take any questions. Thank you, Martin. I'll first get someone to move this and put it on the table, please. I've got Councillor Grigau as our mover and a seconder. Councillor Ebbles. Councillor Grigau, did you have questions for the CEO? Yes, uh, thank you. We were just um, inquiring regarding the community battery. It says the council has agreed to facilitate the use of council managed land to accommodate the batteries. Can you please advise when at uh, what council meeting moved a motion to say we'd facilitate and where the land was being, which land was being used? Uh, through you, Mayor. Um, there, there's not a formal motion uh, on the books to say that we'd facilitate. Um, we supported the application uh, following a briefing of council. So I didn't hear you. Could you repeat that, please? Sorry. Um, there's, no, there's no formal motion uh, on the books that says we will facilitate the use of the council land. Um, and the four sites that have been uh, shortlisted will be presented to the community on the, um, on which date is it? The, the April 10. So there's no, there's no formal um, sites at this point because there's a number of processes to go through, but um, there's, there's, um, there is some sites that Mondo will talk through at that uh, community presentation. So could we request a um, change um an amendment to your report and saying, because the council has not agreed to facilitate the use of council managed land, so we just, because it says we've, um, we've actually voted on that, so would it be possible to have that amended? Certainly, you could, you could certainly change that to um, the CEO has agreed to facilitate. Thank you. Councillor Ebbles, as our seconder, did you have any questions for the CEO? No. No, thank you. Other questions for the CEO? Yeah. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Just do it as a, sorry, through you. Um, it, it's a, we'll just do it as a ministry because 
cancel is uh, was used in the generic sense and we'll just change it to the CEO, so it doesn't necessarily need a, a motion. Yep. Uh, Councillor Grout, you had a question? Yeah, just uh, again in regard to the, um, the community battery proposal, can you, can you give us some indication what sort of financial obligation they might be on the ratepayers um, through the proposal? You know, what are, I'm, I'm not I'm asking for a dollar number so much as what are the sorts of things that, that might be uh, uh, the borough's obligation in this, uh, in this arrangement? So the, the initial work that we've done indicates that there's no financial obligation to the borough, that the funding uh, fully covers the costs uh, of the batteries and that the Mondo in picking up a lease on council land is fully responsible for maintenance and uh, management of those assets. Um, we will potentially get a small um, return on, on any kind of lease um, uh, monies that we get, but otherwise there's no there's no obliga no financial obligation for council. Further questions for the CEO? All right. With that, I'll put the recommendation that council receives the CEO report for March to the vote. So all in favour? Thank you. That's carried unanimously. Item 12 is the uh, health and wellbeing portfolio and 12.1 is the mayoral task force notice of motion to 2024 General National General Assembly advocating for refugees. We have a lengthy recommendation, uh, maybe I'll invite actually the CEO to speak to this in the first instance. Oh, thank you Mayor, I think we've sort of uh, covered it in, the, in question time. It's. Uh, um, Council has supported a, a number of these initiatives and has remained um, certainly through the last couple of national conferences that we've attended and remained very active in um, putting motions to the to the local government sector across Australia to support um, the uh, faster or the process to support re review of the processes that impact on um, uh, temporary asylum seekers and now post the, the changes um, to make sure that there's reviews in place to, to uh, address those people who are sort of left in limbo. But um, otherwise, I'm happy to take some questions. So we do have a four-point uh, motion or recommendation before us, which essentially asks that Council endorse the proposed mayoral task force motion to the 2024 National General Assembly of Australian Local Government Association in support of seeking asylum. And the four points, um, some with many sub-elements, are before us in the agenda tonight. Do I have someone to move this recommendation as presented? I'm ha happy to move the motion. Mayor Tolhurst. Councillor Ebbles is our mover. Do I have a seconder for the motion? Councillor Minty. Uh, Councillor Ebbles, if you'd like to speak to the motion. Yep. I'd like to put an alternative motion up on this uh, matter to put this document uh, up for community consultation under the guise of CP003 and put it out for one month and then return it back to the um, April, March, April, May um, council meeting. May. May. Aye. May. Do I have um, councillors, would everyone hear Councillor Grigal's alternate motion? Yeah, I'll, I'll second that for the purpose of debate so I can understand a little bit more about what the issues are, I think. Thank you, Councillor Grout. So that's our seconder. So, Councillor Grigal, do you wish to speak to the alternate motion? Yes, uh, I think with a lot of these uh, motions that actually gets passed on these um, meetings that, that um, councillors attend, you know, I think to bring it back to the broader community that which we, we rep represent should actually be consulted on. You know, and we all you know, like to have a better world f for everyone, but no, it's, um, it's a bit perplexing you know, for the ratepayers of this borough to understand why we're you know, getting involved with our refugee proposals that's in the remit of the federal government. So I think that needs to be fully explained to the community and have the, let them have a say. 
Thank you, Councillor Grigau. Councillor Grout, did you wish to speak or comment or ask a question perhaps of our And to say that I'm somewhat confused about uh, whether we need to or don't need to consult on this issue. I know I've been very supportive of uh, these things over the three years or three and a half years now that I've been on council. Uh, and so I'm not sure if I'm missing something. But I do, I do recognise that uh, our engagement with the community um, is in need of some improvement. So uh, that was why I was happy to second the motion and um, listen to what the issues might be. I'm still not clear on what, uh, which way I would vote on this, to be honest. I'll call on anyone to speak against the motion. Thank you, Councillor Ebbles. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, I'll, I'll speak against the motion. Um, I don't see why we would be per per sorry, perplexed uh, at all because our community has asked us to do this for many, many years now. This is my second term on council and for seven and a half years we've been advocating for exactly these things. And even as recently as on the weekend, there was a community walk in Queensland for refugees. So the community have been talking and for many, many years about this. And it's, it's not a policy, it's, it's about advocating and supporting uh, the other councils uh, who are also refugee welcome zones, as is the borough of Queenscliff. Thank you, Councillor Ebbles. Anyone to speak for or against the motion further? Thank you, Councillor Minty. Just to... Um Reiterate um, what um, Senator Andrew Wilkie said over the uh, over the weekend um, regarding uh, a similar uh, situation that's occurred. Um, he, he said um, we need a better way to deal with refugees uh, other than just as a political football, um, and I believe that to be true. And I think we're going to have to find a better way to deal with this issue. It's a human issue. It's people. Um, people's lives are at risk and uh, we need to show some compassion as a first world country. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Minty. Um, I also wish to speak against the alternate motion, um, reiterating the comments that Councillor Ebbles has made and noting particularly his long-standing advocacy on this matter. Um, often these matters are brought by advocacy forums like um, the Mayoral Task Force, but they're also and more commonly brought to us by Queenscliff Rural Australians for Refugees, who are a highly membered and local organisation that continue to do this advocacy and support local refugees. So I do refute the idea or the concept that it's a federal issue alone. I think these people, as I've mentioned previously in this chamber, live among us. They are our neighbours, our friends, our colleagues. And to that extent, I feel some sort of duty to them um, to promote and advocate where possible for their rights. And I think this is part of being a supporter council of this mayoral task force. And, and should that change, council, you know, is, is, in, is, in, is in a position any time to withdraw its support of this. But uh, consistently, we hear from our community that this is something they want us to advocate for. With that, I'll hand back to Councillor Grigau for a right of reply. Just reiterate that um, these policies or emotions that we want to put up into support, they've got nothing to do with the remit of local council. And we have to go and get back to our jobs, stick to our lane, and just follow to provide services for our, the ratepayers. Thank you, Councillor Grigau. Uh, with the debate concluded, I will put the alternate motion to the vote, and that is to confirm that the proposed motion goes to the community for consultation for a period of a month with a resolution to be brought to council or for consideration by the May ordinary meeting. Was that the essence of the... Yes. Yep, just wanted to confirm so we're all conscious of what we're voting on. Uh, so all in favour of the alternate motion by show of hands. All opposed? The motion is lost. Sorry, Mayor Tolhurst, can I call a division, please? You can. Uh, Councillor Minty, uh, pardon me, Councillor Ebbles has called a division. So all in favour of the alternate motion, uh, by show of hands, please. We have Councillors Grout and Councillors Grigau, and all opposed? 
Councillors Ebbles, Councillors Tolhurst and Councillors Minty, and the motion remains lost. Go back to the original. Oh, sorry, I thought you were... Pardon me. We do have to return in, in the alternate motion being lost to the original motion as put by Councillor Ebbles, uh, my apologies, and that is the recommendation as presented in the agenda. Uh, so we had our uh, mover and, and a seconder. I suppose Councillor Ebbles, do you wish to speak further to that original no, no. motion? Thank you. Councillor Minty. Oh, it just goes straight to the vote, doesn't it, when it's back. My apologies, a procedural error there. Um, as we're reverting to the original motion, um, we've noted our mover and seconder and I will put it to the vote. So all in favour of the recommendation as presented in the agenda, by show of hands. And all those opposed? Any abstain? Abstain or no? Abstaining. Abstaining. Thank you. The motion is carried. <laughs> for a division on this, thank you. Councillor Grigau has called a division, so I'll put the vote uh, to councillors again, all in favour of the recommendation as presented. Councillors Ebbles, Councillors Minty and Councillor Tolhurst, all opposed. Councillor Grigau and those abstaining is uh, Councillor Grout. And the motion remains carried, thank you. The next item is in the environment portfolio, uh, item 13, and item 13.1, the Reflect Reconciliation Action Plan. So I'll invite our Climate Emergency Response Plan Project Officer Beck to speak to this item. Thank you. Thank you. First, I would just like to acknowledge any First Nations people who may be online and those First Nation leaders who led the development of the Reflect Wrap who may be online as well tonight. Mayor, councillors, presented to you is the Borough of Queenscliff's Reflect Reconciliation Action Plan as endorsed by Reconciliation Australia and a timeline for the implementation of the Reflect Wrap. The Wrap is part of council working to support the shared vision of the Wadarong Healthy Country Plan. Together with the current council plan, council committed to develop and endorse a Reconciliation Action Plan, or RAP, as a formal commitment to reconciliation. Actions included a commitment to start the innovative journey guided by Reconciliation Australia's Reconciliation Action Plans, which provides a strategic framework to guide Council's contribution to reconciliation, both internally with the Reflect Wrap and then in the community with the start of the Innovate Wrap. A Reflect Wrap is used to lay the foundations in a workplace for future wraps and reconciliation initiatives. A Reflect Wrap is an internally focused document that is a public commitment by an organisation. The Reflect Wrap is designed to provide workplaces with a roadmap to begin their reconciliation journey and includes mandatory actions and deliverables that workplaces are required to commit to in order to receive Reconciliation Australia's endorsement. As explained to councillors and staff throughout the development of the Reflect Wrap, Reconciliation Australia provides the standards for accreditation. There are four types of wraps that are developed in the sequential order of one Reflect, two Innovate, three Stretch and four Elevate. The Reflect Wrap and the other wrap types are structured around Reconciliation Australia's wrap framework and four core pillars, relationships, respect, opportunities and governance. The RAP framework sets out mandatory actions and inclusions. The borough correctly followed Reconciliation Australia's processes for RAP development, review and endorsement. 
The borough's RAP was prepared by the RAP Working Group comprising of Mayor Tolhurst, Councillor Gregau and Council Officers, representatives from Wadawurrung Traditional Owners Aboriginal Corporation and other First Nations representative leaders in the community with the sessions facilitated by Aboriginal-owned Tiamo Consulting. It was a process of deep listening to First Nations people for their guidance. The Burroughs Reflect Wrap has been endorsed by Reconciliation Australia and will now take around 12 months to implement. Council can now also proceed with the next step, which is to develop and innovate Wrap. In this phase, Council will work with the community to develop reconciliation initiatives. An Innovate Wrap requires two calendar years for development and will also need to be endorsed by Reconciliation Australia and involves the community. Implementation of the Reflect Wrap will take place from March 24 to March 25, if endorsed by Council, concurrently with the process of developing an Innovate Wrap. One of the many benefits of this project is that it will help to demonstrate the ongoing relationship be mean building and meaningful engagement with Wadawurrung traditional owners and First Nation peoples, along with an increased understanding and respect for Wadawurrung country and First Nations peoples. So the officer recommendation is that council adopts the Borough of Queenscliff Reflect Reconciliation Action Plan as endorsed by Reconciliation Australia and commences the implementation of the Reflect Reconciliation Plan while concurrently commencing the process for developing the Innovate Reconciliation Action Plan with Reconciliation Australia and the community. Thank you. Thank you, Beck. Do I have someone to move the motion as presented and put it on the table? Councillor Minty, thank you as our mover. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Ebbles. Councillor Minty, do you wish to speak to Very the motion? To on this, please. Councillor like Grigau. Yes, I'd um, like to an move an motion. alternative motion of this uh, policy uh, to be put out for two months consultation to the community and brought back to you and then just um, voted back in July. This paper, the uh, um, binding document that we've been asked to vote on, has got some sort of actions that severely affect the ratepayers and the community of the borough of Queenscliff. So therefore, they deeply need to be discussed and um, communicated with our community. Is there a seconder for Councillor Grigau's alternate motion? Thank you, Councillor Grout. Yeah, so... Um, Sorry, I'll just take it as the seconder and then I suppose do you want to speak further to yes, the motion? Thank you, thank you Councillor uh, uh, Grigau, pardon me. Like, what are we signing up for? It is clear that the community has excluded from the decisions and um, actions which will directly impact them. By the way of action six on page 32, commits the community to implement usage of traditional names to, of Queenscliff Point Lonsdale and surrounding borough of Queenscliff locations, engage in local traditional owners and to consider the use of traditional language names in the borough of Queenscliff for events or weeks throughout the year, or develop the signage using traditional language to inform visitors about the Wadawurrung country. None of these, None of these examples provide the opportunity for community to input into how such initiatives may be implemented. E example, how signage interacts with post-colonial heritage. Other decisions are overreached by any council such as encouraging organisations and events seeking sponsorship to identify their Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander engagement and procurement process, Action 9. There is no clear benefit of having a RAP working group to participate in an external NADOC week event even though, it costs, even though it's cost borne by ratepayers, Action 7. The statement of Action 8, tailing, tailoring vacancies to encourage Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander applicants say nothing about their employment decisions would be passed on 
but, uh, that would be based on skills of the applicant rather than just aboriginality or race. This is far too loose and has this is far too loose to have an, an employment criterion. Action 11, define response needed for the RAP implementation and continue to allocate funds to support implementation should be subject to the usual budget process. The wording is ambiguous and open-ended. Likewise, an action, likewise in action 11, the d directive to engage senior le leaders in delivering the delivery of the RAP commitments is unclear as to who such senior leaders are and what form of engagement would take. The deliberate exclusion of community engagement to provide feedback on the RAP is simply not transparent and binds the council to a process which could cause difficulties within the community if not handled sensitively. If the council is sure it is on the right path with this reconciliation plan, then the community feedback should be welcomed. Just follow CP003, Community Engagement Policy. As such, I request the council defer endorsing this wrap as presented tonight to, a later, to the later meeting as already pointed out, to enable the broader community consultation and better understanding of what can and should be achieved. Thank you, Councillor Grigau. And just confirming you're not calling for a deferral, you're still calling for the consultation as per the alternate motion. Thank you, uh, Councillor Grout, as the seconder. Yeah, look, speak? Um, yeah, I'm happy to um, uh, to support this motion, and I think the um, where I do I do support the RAP process, and I was involved in that process uh, in the very early days, and then Councillor Grigau. Uh, became the main uh, councillor rep on that group. Um, so I respect um, he, his judgment here about um, what some of the content might mean. Um, I would be interested in, in understanding some of these actions a bit better then, uh, in light of what he's just said. I think, um, you know, we do seem to have another communication issue here over the over this wrap um, I, I can see that the the reflect wrap which has been produced here and been endorsed by reconciliation Australia but endorsed just this month um, is a preliminary wrap and that the next step is the uh, development of that innovation or innovative uh, the innovate wrap plan um, and that is, is, uh, is designed to engage the community and, and start a journey with the whole community. But it seems from the, the questions that we've got tonight and the fact that we sort of land this in an ordinary meeting agenda paper and then people got 48 hours to get their head around this kind of content is, is again sort of like really, I think, uh, uh, it's it's um, it's giving us a problem with with how community perceives the work of the council, at what we're doing. I th I'm feeling that there's uh, a loss of confidence and a lack of trust in uh, in both what the council, um, what the council are discussing and supporting, um, and the material that's being put forward by the administration to the council. So I, I cannot see that. Um, um, having a period of, of, of pause here in, in the process where we can get some uh, engagement with our community about what, what they think of this first stage of the RAP, uh, which was for the borough organisation, uh, communicating um, more clearly what the, the whole process is um, and give people an opportunity to understand what we mean by these um, 13 actions in this first RAP. I think that will be a positive thing for our community. So I'm happy to support the motion on that basis, even though I might say again, I'm very, very supportive of the RAP process. I have, I have a broad understanding of what that process is. Thank you, Councillor Grout. Are there other councillors who wish to speak against the motion or for the motion? Thank you, Councillor Minty. Thank you, Mayor. I must be missing something because I see this as the start of a journey, not uh, the end of a journey. 
that we're not really um, this process of um, reconciliation is a long time is a long time coming. I see this. I see this as the start of a journey, not the end of a journey. I don't really see it being committed. In fact, I see the four pillars as being uh, uh, providing us a topic that the community can comment on at every level and they should get engaged. I believe uh, the reconciliation is coming. There are countries within the United Kingdom that have had language changes on signs. Wales, for instance, where all of the signs now are in Welsh. Um, nobody's up in arms. There's nobody sort of walking or storming the balustrades there. It is just part of what it, this change is all about. And we're back to the old saying, if not who, if not now, when? And we are part of this process. We can't hide from it. We are a homogenous society. I understand that. But the reality is that reconciliation is going to be part of our society and we're going to have to live with that. And we might as well manage the process, embrace the process and get to know more about where we live and what we're doing. We pride ourselves as being historians, but it seems to stop at steamships. We don't seem to look further back than that. And that's why we'll probably emotionally be lesser people for it, I think. Uh, being part of the reconciliation uh, and embracing it will enrich our lives here in the borough. I support the motion. I disagree with my colleague on this motion. Thank you, Councillor Minty. Other councillors to speak for or against the motion? Um, I wish to speak against the alternate motion. Um, I think it was a really a really privileged experience to be part of the RAP Working Group alongside Councillor Grigau, officers and traditional owners, and reiterating a lot of the discussion that's occurred today uh, regarding uh, that this being a first critical step, a sort of step to get the house in order that ensures the future sustainability of RAPs that come after this one. Um, I think it's, it's in the guidelines that the document is heavily templated by way of what Reconciliation Ex Australia ad expect our various groups to input and how they're formed. Um, the creation of a reconciliation action plan is in the council plan, which was a document that was heavily consulted on, as is the dual naming of places and locations in the borough. So these aren't surprises by any means. The need for one and the, the role of reconciliation and deep engagement with First Nations people is also brought to light in our SERP, hence why it sits in the environment portfolio. Um, and I'm, I'm really supportive and, as I said, feel extremely privileged to have been on the journey of creating that um, and really look forward to hearing, to, to working through the process and, and engaging or extending that sphere of influence at the appropriate moment when we get to the next documents. Councillor Grigau to respond. You can't force a relationship. Relationships are built on two people with mutual trust. When you're actually not bringing us one side along the journey, it will not work. And by ramming it down the throats of people and not bringing these people along with the journey, you, we're bound to fail. And it's very, very sad that you know there's actions here during the meetings that council could immediately um, undertake. Know, to commit and do things in NADOC. You don't need to wait to be told. You know, uh, from the cons um, consultants, just do it, and then, then you, you will bring the, um, the community along. But binding people with this document without consulting the community is really uh, just abhorrent to, to our um, people's um, ability. And it comes down to, or by going without consultation, Democracy is dead in this council. It's a, it's, it's a big shame if, you know, without going back to the community and bringing him along the journey, it, it will be bound to fail. With closing comments concluded, I will put Councillor Grigal's alternate motion to the vote. So all in favour? All opposed? The motion is lost and we will revert to our original... Call for a division on that, please.
Councillor Grigau has called for a division on the alternate motion. So all in favour of the alternate motion calling for community consultation. We have Councillors Grigau and Councillors Grout. All opposed? Councillors Ebbles, Tolhurst and Minty. And the motion is still lost. And I proceed to reverting to the original recommendation as presented in the document, uh, in the agenda tonight and put our three point uh, recommendation to the vote. So all in favour? All opposed? Those abstaining? Thank you, the motion is carried. All for it. Councillor Grigau has called for a division. Uh, so all in favour of the recommendation as presented? Confirming that we're putting this to the vote. Okay, all opposed? We had councillors Ebbles, councillors Tolhurst, and I didn't. Mm, councillors Ebbles and Tolhurst, all opposed? Mm. Oh, sorry. I'll call for the, sorry, the recommendation before us, which we've reverted to now, just to be very clear, with the three point item in the agenda. All in favour of this recommendation as presented? Councillors Ebbles, Councillor Minty, Councillor Tolhurst, all opposed? Councillor Grigau and those abstaining? Councillor Grout. The motion is carried. Thank you, Beck. That brings us to item 14, local economy. There are no reports to consider in this portfolio. Item 15, Heritage Planning and Infrastructure, and I'll invite Senior Planner, um, or our Manager for Infrastructure, Tim, to ask, uh, not infrastructure, sorry, Stu. <laughs> um, pardon me, Tim, to speak to this item tonight. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Councillors and members of the community. Just like to uh, add one status update in relation to the planning application of 2021 uh, 048, so that's the, the address of 200, 204 Point Lonsdale Road, Point Lonsdale. So post the 19th of March, when this report was published, there's been some progress that the councillors have been briefed on, but just to inform the community that a cultural heritage management plan has been a, approved and received by the senior planner. Um, the applicant has also provided some additional information to address some of the objections uh, that the nine objectors had in relation to some minor amendments around uh, overlooking and waste storage areas. And the proposed plan in coming months is to, um, for the senior planner to communicate with the objectors and then uh, have a briefing, uh, most likely to be around May, and a planning review meeting scheduled to be sometime around June for council to consider before it comes back to a council meeting. So that's just an update on that matter. Thank you, Tim. Did you want to bring our attention to any other that is it by way of specifics? No, no, the, the rest I'll just take the report as read. Any further questions? Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Tim. Uh, can I have someone to move then the recommendation that the planning permit activity port report be received for the month of March? I'm happy to move that, Mayor Tollers. Thank you, Councillor Ebel. Someone to second receipt of the report? Councillor Grigau. Councillor Ebbles, did you have questions or wish to speak um, to the motion? No, just to thank Tim for the update on um, 200 to 204 Point Lonsdale Road. We know it's been around for, for um, since 2021, so it's nice to see that there is some progress and we look forward to councillors receiving a briefing, I think you said in May, and then the planning review, uh, which is obviously open to the public as well um, in June. So thank you for that. And um, it's good to see there's been plenty of um, applications finalised, and um, more finalised than received. So that's a, a positive. So well done. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ebbles. Thank you, Councillor Ebbles. Councillor Grigau, questions or to speak to the motion? Uh, do you have to, uh, just a rough um, update regarding the 
BCAT hearing for 6 McDonald Lane. It's like um, the compulsory conference has definitely been booked and we'll be making representation. Um, correct. So a um, compulsory conference is um, scheduled for the 9th of May. Um, and if that matters aren't resolved there, then a, a hearing is scheduled for the 15th and 16th of July. And uh, who will be our legal? Uh, Maddox have been engaged. Thank you. Councillor Gregor. Thank you, Councillor Gregor. Further uh, questions for Tim on the planning permit activity report for March? Nope. Thank you. With that, I'll put the recommendation that the report be received to the vote. All in favour? Thank you. That's carried unanimously. Thank you, Tim. Item 15.2 is the Active Transport Strategy two-year implementation plan, and I'll invite the real Manager for Infrastructure and Environment, Stuart, to talk through the briefing and the report tonight. Good evening, Mayor Tolhurst and councillors. Uh, the purpose of the report is to seek council's endorsement of the Active Transport Strategy draft implementation plan. I'll take the report as read, however, I'll reiterate the uh, implementation plan has been developed giving consideration to available budgets, available resources, possible grant funding, linkages to council strategy, and feedback received through the ATS engagement process. An engagement process that was extensive, that occurred over a span of many months, that engaged directly with many stakeholders, and that gave uh, the community multiple opportunities to provide submissions. A number of items are also identified within the implementation plan as dependent on external funding. Should grant funding not be available, these items may not be delivered. Uh, the recommendation tonight is on page 36 of the agenda that Council endorses the proposed two year implementation plan as presented. Thank you, Stuart. I'll ask that someone move that recommendation to put it on the table. Thank you, Councillor Ebbles, our mover and a seconder. Our Councillor Minty is our seconder. Councillor Ebbles, did you wish to speak to the motion or ask a question um, of Stuart? More, more a question to Stuart or maybe the CEO. I'm just wondering uh, how we actually report the progress of these items to the community. Would that, would this then feed into our annual plan where we, we report on a quarterly basis? Uh, through you, Mayor, and, and thank you for your question. Councillor Ebbles, yes, if, if Council does adopt the implementation plan, we'll, we'll use the annual plan reporting to give you progress updates on the activity that we, we put into the next annual plan year. Okay, thank you. Uh, no further questions. I'd like to put an alternative motion regarding this uh, Active Transport Two Year Strategy Implementation Plan. Alternative motion is actually to not to endorse this council um, two year imp implementation plan until it's gone out to public consultation, like we um, council normally does. Would require one month community engagement, advertised fully, and then we can report back in the. Uh, um, May, May um, a council meeting. Councillor Grigau has put an alternate motion to the chamber. Do I have someone to second that motion? Thank you, Councillor Grout. We have a seconder. Councillor Grigau, do you wish to speak further to the motion? In the past, on all these implementation plans, and even when we actually brought the uh, strategy to, um, to a vote. We were actually pr uh, pr promised that the implementation plan would be drawn up and then the community would be able to um, give their input and comment. Now, how, how is that um, fair for the community to only be given 48 hours to actually read the implementation plan and then fully understand it and then to be able to get, speak to councillors and um, to get back to them with their concerns? That's why I believe that we should be actually give the community like one month to actually um, confront and um, uh, bring their concerns to all councillors to be able to improve the papers to make any changes if required. 
Just a point of order on accuracy that the motion didn't contain anything about committing uh, council to the implementation plan being a public or rather being put out for community consultation. Um, the motion of that oh, no, meeting it's actually in says that the, the, the original motion is actually the council endorses. You know, it comes down to the community actually needs to, a chance and a time to actually um, contemplate and actually reflect on our, all the actions and how it's being done to be able to say, to be able to go back to their elected representatives to say that it's actually a good or a bad thing. So the alternative motions actually give the community one month to reflect and get back to councillors to saying um, if the uh, the two-year strategy, which is quite a long one, you know, if it normally you just do 12 months, to, um, to be able to let them have their say. Thank you for clarifying, Councillor Grigau. Councillor Grout, did you wish to speak to the motion? Yes, I do, because um, I did second the active transport. I sort of uh, was in two minds about um, supporting it after the uh, tortuous process in, in putting that strategy together. But I did second it um, on the basis that an implementation plan was going to be um, developed. Um, so when we passed that motion, I expected to see an implementation plan. I was, I was actually away, I think, when, you, when, you, when this came to an assembly. But when I look at this... Um, implementation plan in the ordinary meeting minutes now. Um, I'm not really recognising this as, as implementation. It's, it's not a plan in the in the sense that I would recognise a plan. Um, I think there's some key elements that we need to have in a plan like this. Um, it should include uh, deliverables. Um, it should be a bit clearer about resources, resources needed. Um, and I think we need a clearer timeline rather than just the year in which the thing might happen. Um, and I'd really like to see um, who's responsible too. So if I think, I think you've got those elements in a plan, um, I'll understand a little bit more about what we're proposing to do. Um, so I'll support the motion because I think um, uh, if we have some community engagement around this plan, I'll be interested to see if I'm the only person in town who thinks like that, uh, or if there's any other support for, for uh, the notion that we have uh, a, a better, um, better d detail in our implementation plans. Thank you, Councillor Grout. Anyone wishing to speak against the motion? Thank you, Mayor Tolles. Yeah, I will speak against it. I, I think I'm going to refer to page 38 when it talks to um, to help achieve these targets. 21 individual strategies addressing the five separate objectives are proposed within the ATS section six, the strategy. So it's from the strategy that these this has come out. So we've done the consultation already on the strategy, and this is what's come out of that strategy. So I think um, I think. Uh, we, in actual fact, we've already consulted with the community, as we know, quite quite vigorously over many, many months with the ATS, and this has come out of that ATS, this strategy. So that's why I'll uh, vote against the motion. Thank you, Councillor Ebbles. Others to speak for or against the motion? Uh, then I'll offer no. Councillor Grigau his right of reply. Right, pardon. Just, you know, look, even, you know, a closer look regarding your t the two-year implementation plan, it actually stretches over three financial years. You've got 2023-24, yeah, that's, um, you've got three, three actions or strategies there, and then 24-25, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then on 25, 20, um, and then year 25, 26, you have one. Now, these are the things, that the mistakes and stuff, the community should be able to speak up and actually say, oh, are these priorities correct and this is what is dearly needed? But, you know, it comes down to, if I, I need to say it again, democracy is dead in this council. We're going to keep on ramming these things through. Through, through you, Mayor, just a point of order. Um, the, the calendar, if we start from today and go two years, it does actually cover three budget cycles, Councillor Gugger. We're, in, we're currently in 23-24. The next full year will be 
24, 25, and then the last half year where we're still delivering this will be 25, 26. So it's not um, a mistake or an error, as you put it. It's just the reality of we're starting this in the middle of a financial year. And then to be clearer about when the, uh, when the action has to be delivered, that's why I'm saying with Ca Councillor Grout, it's, being, it's very open-ended that, that you know, you're giving these 12-month periods, or that one's a, a six-month, but it comes down to, you know, people, like the community wants certainty on when things are being delivered as opposed to being very open-ended. Thank you. I'll bring the debate to a close and put the alternate motion to the vote. That is a period of community, for the document to be released uh, for community engagement for a period of two months. One, pardon me, one month. Uh, all in favour of the alternate recommendation? All opposed? The motion is lost. We will revert to the recommendation as it's presented in the agenda, and that's that Council endorse the proposed two-year implementation plan as presented. So I'll put that to the vote. All in favour? Uh, pardon me. All opposed? Thank you. Any abstaining? Thank you. Uh, the motion is carried. Division on this, please. Councillor Grigau has called a division, so I'll put that recommendation to the vote again. All in favour? All that, yep. Councillors Ebbles, Tolhurst and Minty, all opposed? Councillor Grigau and Councillor Grout is noted as abstaining. The motion remains carried. Item 15.3, the Point Lonsdale Lighthouse Reserve Project Update Number 3. Stuart, you are still standing here, which suggests to me that you may be delivering this brief in Abby's absence. Thank you, Mayor Tolhurst. Uh, the purpose of this report is to provide an update on the capital work project currently being undertaken at the Point Lonsdale Lighthouse Reserve. Uh, I'll take the report as read and happy to field any questions, although I may need to take some on notice. Um, the recommendation tonight is on page 44 of the agenda. The Council notes the Point Lonsdale Lighthouse Reserve Project update for March 2024. Thank you, Stuart. Um, I'm happy to move that recommendation as someone sitting on the PCG for this project. Do I have someone to second the recommendation about noting the update? Councillor Grigau is our seconder. Uh, I have no questions nor need to speak to the motion. Councillor Grigau, do you wish question, to put a question? Can we have an update to see if the project is going to be delivered on time and on budget? Uh, the, currently, as reported uh, in the previous month's uh, report, the uh, works are subject to a cultural heritage management plan. Uh, currently, um, we're working to understand the implication of that um, process both in terms of uh, time and budget. I, I don't have an answer I can give you at the moment. Uh, I think it would be fair to say, Stuart, it's not going to be delivered on time in terms of the grant, uh, which um, initially spoke about the project being completed in June 2024. So we, we all recognise that and the PCG recognises that. And my understanding is they're working through the implications of that at the moment. What's the, so we'll come back by next month and give us a report to say that um, the risks, if it's not delivered on time, and, uh, and uh, are we be open for financial compensation or for, um, the loss of the grant? Uh, through you, Med, the, the, the grantee is part of the project control group, so they're aware of um, the situation and we haven't received any advice from them about what risks might be involved. We would love to get some advice from them, but we just haven't at this point in time. And at such time that any variation um, or change or council determination is required, that would be brought to council as a recommendation from the PCG. Uh, Councillor Ebbles, I saw your hand yep. up for a question. Thank you, Mayor, and either to Stuart or to the CEO. Just in regard to stage one, it talks about the installation of the signage, recognising water on connection to the site. Expected to occur in the second quarter of 2024. 
So in stage two, you talk about the cultural heritage management plan. Is that is the signage going to be exempt from that intense plan, or can we do a smaller plan, or no need for the plan to do the signage? Um, through you, Mayor. Um, it's not, not exempt as such. We're, what we're doing is working through with Heritage Victoria, the Wadarong uh, and Deka, um, whether or not uh, it's reasonable or, or um, even respectful to, to continue to do that signage, given that we've now received advice around a complex cultural heritage plan. There, there is a process that's available to us to, to test that, and we're, we're testing that at the moment. Because okay. that... I don't understand. That's the last part of stage one, isn't it? It is. Yep. Thank yes. You. Thank you, Councillor Ebbles. Further comments or questions for our officers tonight on this update? No. All right. I'll put the recommendation that Council notes the Point Lonsdale Lighthouse Reserve Project update for March to the vote. So all in favour? Thank you. That's carried unanimously. Thank you, Stu. Uh, that brings us to item 16, our governance and finance portfolio, and item 16.1 is the review of council policies. Uh, we have the CEO in Jenny, or our HR and governance coordinator's absence to talk about the two policies before us tonight, that is uh, the reconciliation policy, CP015, and the public transparency policy, CP050. So I'll ask the CEO in the first instance to comment. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and through you, I think um, uh, this, I think councils will understand why we've brought the reconciliation policy back to you for, for consideration, and the revisions certainly reflect um, what we hoped would occur tonight, which is the adoption or, of the RAP. So that one's self-evident. The public transparency policy is um, is something that was uh, emerged through the 2020 Act. Uh, the, it's got a um, very specific set of objectives that reflect the, the provisions of the Act, and so we just did a review and have made some minor changes just to try and deepen um, the responsibilities of, of transparency. Um, apart from that, happy to take some questions. Thank you, Martin. Do I have someone to move the recommendation as presented? I'd like to raise an alternative motion as, as to split the two uh, policies so we can debate them separately. Uh, a seconder for Councillor Grigau's motion. We have Councillor Ebbles to support that. All in favour of splitting the two policies for consideration individually? Thank you, that's carried unanimously. So, Councillor Grigau, in the first instance, are you happy to address other reconciliation policy as it sits first there? Yes. On a flow on for the, recon uh, the RAP, I believe that CP015, the reconciliation, really needs to go out to community consultation to fully to understand what, what we're committing to. And we're not saying that we're not, we're not, you know, we don't want to be on this journey, but I think to, to bring everybody along, they actually have to have input and some say, as opposed to um, you know, council officers and councillors just drafting up the policy and just leaving the community only two days to make a comment and make a presentation for the policy. So I recommend that the CP015 is actually to go out to the community, have two months to consider, and then coming back to the um, June meeting to adopt, uh, um, to not adopt, to consider adopting the policy. Seconder for that motion. Councillor Grout, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Grigard, take it. You've, did you want to speak further to I'll, the motion? I'll reserve my right. Thank you. Councillor Grout? No other councillors to speak against the motion? or for the motion? Note, then I'll put the alternate motion to the vote that CP015, reconciliation policy, be put to the community for consultation. All in favour? All opposed? Thank you, the motion is carried in this instance. Call for a division on that too, please. 
Councillor Guigau has called for a division, uh, so I'll put that motion again, that alternate motion that CP015 reconciliation policy be put to the community for consultation. All in favour? Councillors Grigau, Tolhurst and Grout, and all opposed? Councillors Minty and Ebbles. The motion is still carried. Uh, that brings us to dealing with the second portion of this item, which is consideration of CP050, public transparency. Uh, and do we have a motion by yeah, I move the motion that CP015, um, to be adopted. It's um, very little change, and you know, I think believe that um, it's, it's okay with, uh, we've made uh, some representation from the community and I'm happy with the um, policy. So can I just clarify policy 050? I oh, say so 050. Yeah, thank you. Uh, do we have a seconder for Councillor Grigau's motion? Thank you, Councillor Ebbles. Uh, Councillor Grigard, do you wish to speak to the motion? I've spoken. No, Councillor Ebbles, do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, anyone else wish, wishing to speak for or against the motion? No. So all in favour? Thank you. The motion is carried unanimously. Brings us to item 17, which is the signing and sealing of documents. So there are no reports to consider. Question 18, questions without notice, and 18.1, questions without notice status update. There are no questions without notice outstanding. Item 18.2, questions without notice. So at this point, I call for questions from the councillors uh, without notice for those who have them. There appears to be no questions without notice. Nope. So I will proceed just to make a note of item 19, which is to list a list of upcoming council meetings. Um, a planning review meeting has been noticed, uh, noted, and what's not here is the information session on the community or neighbourhood batteries plan for April 10. Um, and there is a listening post occurring at the Queenscliff Market this weekend. Item 20, closed session of meeting. Um, I now close or call to close the meeting to consider confidential items. Uh, and the two items before us are item 20.1, Community Service Awards 2024, and item 20.2, CEO Employment Contract. Uh, so the, um, I will put the recommendation or ask for uh, Someone to move that we head into confidential and close the meeting to the public at this point. Do I have someone to move that? Thank you, Councillor Ebbles. And a seconder, Councillor Grigau, all in favour? Thank you, that's carried unanimously. Um, so at this point, we will ask the public to leave. Thank you for joining us tonight um, as we head into our confidential section.